Afternoon, everybody. And we're back out with RB. And we are out on this Lexmoto Echo 50. This is a standard Echo. This one's going out to Harley tomorrow. It's the final test ride. It's already got 9K on the bike. My mechanics and technicians have already done the run for me, the pre-run. This is the final ride test. This is where RB has a look at the bike, checks it all over and says, yes, it can go. No, it can't go. So front brake, all good. Rear brake, all good. Levers, exactly where they should be, nice and level. And they actually match each side. The amount of people that get a bike and one lever is down or one lever is up, so annoying. Nice level uh, levers. Mirrors nicely set up. I've got a great view of the road behind. And obviously this is just the test run on video so the customer can see his bike being ridden nice and steady nice steady 25 mile an hour at the moment because we're in a 30 zone and then we're going to get out and obviously put it through its paces as we say quick little bit of observations there coming in on the rear brake brakes are good front brake stops on a sixpence forks dive nicely Engine's running absolutely perfect, no engine lights on. Bike sounds as it should. And great, they put a uh, road closure in here, so I'm going to upset the traffic and sit at 30 mile an hour in a 40 zone. Tough. You're going to have to wait behind. Dominate the lane. Make them wait. So, it's doing 30 mile an hour bang on. As I say, with all new bikes, they do sit at 30 mile an hour. But they do get, once you start running them in, progressively faster. And I've got absolutely no idea why they've coned this road off. I don't see any work happening whatsoever. But nice little queue of cars behind me though. So you can work at rev bomb speed. Now, a couple of things I am going to cover. If you haven't seen the ride test that I did um, on the Cypher, where I had a car driver car here, yeah. someone's actually commented, he went, oh, Oh, look at you. What do they call you? Kev bomb? No, it's Rev bomb. Get your facts right to start with. He says, well, we should change your name to Kevin Kilowatt. Electric bikes aren't all that. Well, maybe not, mate. Oh, if that's your only bike, mate, I pity you. And I actually commented back, no, it's not the only bike that I own. That was a customer's bike that I was riding. But I own a GTR 1400 and a ZX 7R. What do you own? Oh. I've got a Yamaha 125, I've owned it for a year, yeah, so you're a keyboard warrior, you don't know what you're talking about, shut the hell up, get back in the corner and get back in your cage. If you own an electric bike, not a problem with it, if it's a 30 mile an hour bike and it's your first bike and you're 16, you can either go for one of these, which is a twist and go scooter, or you could go for a geared 50, not that many geared 50s around at the moment, but you can also go for a cipher. Now someone has been messaging me quite a lot regarding the ciphers and saying what are they like, are they good, what's the batteries like, would they last five years? I don't know because the cipher hasn't been out that long but there is a three year warranty on it and those that have obviously got older bikes are not having any issues with their batteries. So that's your 50cc equivalent. Yes, the Cypher does go a little bit faster, but as soon as you go and unrestrict the bike, it ends up being, uh, obviously, out of warranty. Watching that junction. So, next Moto Echo, probably one of the best little scooters you get, and everybody's got an Echo these days. Lovely little bikes. I don't mind them. 30 mile an hour, it's alright for puddling around in town. If you happen to be going down the roads of Milton Kings, yes. A lot of the dual carriages are dual carriageways are 70 mile an hour, but it's the only way you're going to get around Milton Keynes, and there's two lanes. If you're doing 30, people can go around you. What's the problem, people? Stop whinging. Or in the words of Arnie Schwarzenegger, stop whining! It's my best impression of Arnie. Not as good as my Scots impression that I do, but uh, sounds more pirate than anything. Now, live stream on Friday. If you happen to uh, have joined us in the live stream, it went down the rabbit hole very, very quickly from 9 o'clock where we were talking about bicycles and the new laws related to pedestrians stepping off the curbs and where bicycle riders should ride. I don't have a problem 
apart from the odd one or two cyclists to what we call RLJs, red light jumpers, that will go straight through a set of traffic lights on a bicycle. Well, then people need a slap round the back of the head with a wet kipper. If you happen to own a bicycle and it's your only form of transport, because you haven't got a car licence or you haven't got a bike licence, and the only form of transport that you've got is thank you, a uh, bicycle, then no problem, as long as you are riding like a proper cyclist. Most cyclists are a little bit nuts, ride six or seven in a pack so no car can get round them and then they whinge when the car driver does try to get round them. Or, you're a cyclist, you should be on the road and you're like this, you're riding up the pavement. Never slap round the head with a uh, wet kipper. So as we say, if you are a cyclist, not a problem. I don't have an issue. If we are out bike riding, we see a cyclist normally, uh, if we're out on the big rides with the boys, is to do the normal thing and give them a nice wide berth, give them a little toot as you're coming up to them, just to make them aware that you are there, and give them a little wave as you go past. They'll acknowledge you, but give them a wide berth, guys, which is what we normally say to do. And obviously that was one of the things that was covered, the new rules of the Highway Code. I'm not going to go into it too much because it did get very, very messy very, very quickly once we started discussing what to do with cyclists and what to do with the pedestrian. Now the other thing that we also covered was uh, with Brandon, Brandon Darby. And he's one of the admins on the 1KC Club or the 1000CC Club. And we've got a big thing coming up in August which is the Mental Health Awareness Week. Now everybody suffers from depression. Now, M.T. Belly, if you happen to follow M.T. Belly, he did a little bit of a, a blog about, uh, obviously, things that have happened in his life and how he suffers from depression, anxiety, stress, and he actually got out to the Super Sausage and met us, and I think it made his day, well, it probably made his year. We had a nice meet-up with him, Tina, and Kira, and they had a look around the bikes, obviously met all the vlogging crew, met Andy and uh, Uncle Red and the Rhythmic Biker. So they met a lot of motor vloggers that day, and it was a great day for him. Now Simon, GTR1400, has also done a video about uh, mental health awareness and things that uh, get him down. Now obviously Simon being uh, services, and I'm not going to mention which service he was in, to obviously uh, try and sort of save what he said. But he did go on about things that he suffered from and anxiety and stress and depression. Yes, we all do it. And everyone said, you know, most bikers are either ex-forces, ex-services or ex-military. And yes, we all suffer from good days and down days. And I'm not going to mention down days while I'm on another bike. Because the last time I mentioned I had a down day, I did have a down day when I got crunched from behind. So I'm not going to mention that. But yes, I do suffer from anxiety, depression, stress. My job is very, very stressful. With what I do, we're dealing with uh, obviously so many test rides, customers, bike servicing, bike MOTs, cars, we name it, we do it. And it's normally me that is in the brunt when a customer decides he wants to kick off because uh, he's found it cheaper elsewhere or his, pile, his car has failed the MOT because it's an absolute pile of crap. And it's normally us that are in the firing line. Sorry, your car's failed the MOT. Why? You've got no brake pads. Well, it ain't my fault. I put them in two years ago. Yeah, well, they're not going to last two years, are they, buddy? So, that is some of the, uh, obviously, the issues that I've had. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into uh, my past experiences. I have discussed what I did when I was a youngster with a certain uh, platoon or company, as I say, and I did see quite a lot of... Uh, Nasty, horrible sights that have obviously gone into the eyeballs and I can't get out. Hence why I uh, quit after three years. And moved on. But that still comes back and haunts me occasionally. And I do have restless nights every now and then. I do sort of wake up in cold sweats. But, I have a great bunch of bike friends out there. It's like Simon GTR 1400, Andy GSA Tractor, Lockwood, Zhead. Burning gas hauling ass, um, military biker, Stevie, he's an absolute godsend, he's the one to talk to if you're suffering, because obviously him being ex-regiment uh, guys, you can have a chat with them, 
Marine Rider, Junkyard Dad Ski, Goofy Bastard, all the American bike riders I tend to chat to, Hell's on Two Wheels, and obviously Drew's a godsend because I chat to him quite a bit as well, and as I say, if you're suffering from stress and depression, don't keep it in, the hardest thing for you to do, apart from deal with all that stress, is to tell someone about it, yes it is hard to say, look, I'm struggling here, I can't, I can't do what I can do because I'm suffering, and a lot of guys will not open up they'll keep it bottled up inside and then uh, obviously not mention it and it gets worse it escalates you end up in uh, going as I say going in a downward spiral but if you talk to someone about it it's instantly that pressure's off the shoulder the chip has gone and you feel so much better for it but it's that initial stage of I need some help who can I talk to and the biker brotherhood whether it's dropping us a message on YouTube obviously mentioning it in a live stream and saying someone you know I could really do with a talk someone is going to contact you you've got loads of social media out there Facebook Instagram TikTok Twitter you name it and there are always bikers there that want to talk about it so as I say if you're suffering from that sort of thing chat to someone but the best therapy is this sitting on a bike and I don't care if it's a 50cc it's getting out on a bike, the freedom, the open road, the numpty car drivers that we have to deal with, and it's just so much fun. Thank you for the indication, last minute. Numpty car driver. But even on a 50, I'm grinning away like a mad thing, like I always do every time I get on a bike, and all the boys normally say to me, you get to the end of the ride, you get off a bike and you're grinning. Yes, I am grinning, because I just love being out on a bike, and it's great fun. But uh, we are now 15k in. I'm heading back to the garage. Job done. Final thing to add, obviously, we built up the new LS2 helmet last night. It's got the Cardo Pack Torque on it. It's got the, uh, the new drift camera on it. All my bits are all been added. It's all good to go. I'm going to start wearing that this week, and we're going to do some vlogs with the new LS2 helmet, with the Cardo on, just to see what the wind noise is in comparison to this. Now, obviously, this one... As soon as you get the wind, the uh, visor up. Now it's quite a mild day today. It's not that bad, but got a little bit of wind noise there. These LS2 helmets are absolutely beautiful. And uh, thank you very much to the guys from LS2 for sending my new one at slightly discounted rate. I won't mention how much discount I got. And a uh, big, big thanks to the guys from Cardo as well that also uh, gave me a really good one. Thank you, buddy. That's our uh, delivery choice. Let Dave across the road. Thank you very much. <laughs> much appreciated. But end of the ride for Harley. That's his 50cc. I know I've waffled on a bit, but uh, something to do while I'm riding the bike. But uh, as I say from RB, until the next ride, be well, ride safe. And it's a big goodbye from me.